Today, I'm gonna to show you how to sew easy cushion covers. They'll have a zipper on them so that they're fully washable. I'm personally gonna be redoing the covers for my outdoor furniture, so I'll take you along on the whole process. Now let's get into it. We had a storm roll through recently, which really left the outdoor furniture looking super worse for wear. Admittedly, I didn't put the cushions away before the storm, and after the storm was over, I neglected to take care of the cushions. Part of the reason I neglected them was because the seat cushions have buttons sewn through the foam. So even though they have zippers, I can't actually take them off of the foam and therefore I can't actually wash them. I ended up cutting the buttons off, removing the covers, and setting them out to dry. They're pretty gross, but I wanted to reuse the zippers so that they wouldn't go to waste. I'm going to use most of the foam that's inside of the current cushions, but they're not all totally salvageable, so I'll replace some of the foam. Here's what one of those cushions look like. It's got batting and foam and batting on the other side. This one's still in really good shape, so we're going to make a template from this. Now the templates are super easy to make. We're just going to start by doing some measurements, and then we're going to plot down our measurements onto the fabric and cut it all out. Grab a tape measure and measure the width. For mine, it's 26 and a half inches long. And then we're going to measure the length, and it is... 21 and a half inches. Your cushion should be tight around the foam so that it kind of compresses the foam and then there's not any like ugly wrinkles inside the fabric. So what I would recommend doing is not adding any seam allowance. That way once you sew it up, everything's gonna shrink a tiny bit and it should have a good snug fit. So with the measurements that I just took, we're gonna cut out two squares, one for the top piece and one for the bottom piece. Then we're gonna do the exact same thing for the side pieces. My cushion is about three inches tall, so we're gonna use that measurement for the height. So we'll do one panel that's three inches by 21 and a half inches. Then we'll do two panels that are three inches by 26 and a half inches. On one side, we're gonna have to account for the zipper. So it's gonna be the zipper in the middle and two panels on either side. To account for the zippers and the seam allowance, I'm gonna do two inches by 21 and a half inches twice. So what we've just calculated is all four of the side pieces and both the top and the bottom pieces. Now all we have to do is plot that out onto our fabric and cut it all up. The drafting and cutting process is really simple because it's just a bunch of straight lines. Just remember that you don't need to add any seam allowance because we want a snug fit on the cushions. This inevitably means that the cushion covers are a bit difficult to get onto the foam once they're done, but I personally think that it looks the best this way. If you prefer a looser fit, I'd recommend adding half of an inch seam allowance. I ended up adding some seam allowance to the back pillows and not adding seam allowance to the seat cushions because it makes the pillows look fluffier and the seat cushions stay put when you sit on them. Okay, I've just brought in some of the cushions and they're dirty but they're dry. I'm going to seam rip off all of the zippers so that I can reuse them for the covers that I'm making. I didn't realize I could just rip them off, what? That's a way better tactic. <laughs> well, apparently these were really cheaply made because you shouldn't really be able to rip off a thread like that. That's lit. I'm sure they're quite weathered as well. All right, now that all the zippers are prepped to reuse, we're going to cut out foam for the cushions that we couldn't reuse. This foam was given to us, but you can also buy pre-cut cushions from stores like Hobby Lobby, Joann's, or your local fabric store. To cut out our cushions at home, we drew out a template and actually used a bread knife as a foam knife. Obviously, if you purchase pre-cut foam, you don't need to worry about this. But if you do find yourself cutting foam at home, I'd recommend buying a bread knife from a local thrift store for this project. It worked really well for us, and although it was kind of tiring, it was totally doable. After all the foam is prepped, we can move on to sewing. Okay, so at this point you have two options. You can either finish or serge the edge around every single pattern piece, or alternatively, you can stitch everything together and then serge all the edges together at the end. I'm gonna do the latter of those two options, but you're gonna wanna think about the type of fabric that you're using and also the machine that you're using. My machine is capable of handling multiple layers of thick material all together, so that's why I'm gonna serge all the edges together rather than doing them separately. You can choose whatever works best for you, but I'm gonna move on to assembling the pattern pieces. Now let's grab our zipper and the two pieces that it'll be attached to. We're going to pin or clip the zipper to the fabric along both sides with right sides of the fabric facing the right side of the zipper. Don't worry if your zipper is longer than the fabric because we can simply cut it off later. Then we're going to change our machine's presser foot to a zipper foot and we're going to sew a straight stitch close to the zipper teeth. After doing that to both sides of the zipper, we're going to take the piece over to our ironing board and iron open the fabric so that it's easier to top stitch. 
Then we're going to take our standard presser foot and replace the zipper foot so that we can edge stitch close to the sides of the zipper. This next step is optional, but if you'd like to have a zipper cover, you can take the leftover fabric and cut out a small square of fabric that's large enough to cover the zipper. For me, this pattern piece is 3.5 inches by 3 inches. The piece will then get folded in half, pinned or clipped to the top of the zipper, and sewn into place. Just make sure that before sewing, you've moved the zipper pull below the cover. When you've finished stitching the zipper cover in place, this is what it should look like. Now we're going to take all four side panels and pin or clip them together with the right sides facing to make a box shape. Make sure you attach the short panels to the long panels and don't accidentally put two short panels or two long panels next to each other. Once it's all clipped in place, we're going to sew a straight stitch with 1 4th of an inch seam allowance. You'll want to sew with the side panels on top so that you start and end the seam at the very edge of the side seams that we sewed earlier. Making sure that this step is precise will help you get sharp corners when we flip the cover right sides out. This is what the seam should look like once you're done. Then we're going to grab our other pattern pieces and pin or clip the bottom of the cover to the sides. I find it's easiest to clip the outer corners first and then go back and clip the rest in place. This helps to evenly distribute the material so that you have a perfect fit. Once it's all clipped in place, we're going to sew a straight stitch with 1 4th of an inch seam allowance. You'll want to sew with the side panels on top so that you start and end the seam at the very edge of the side seams that we sewed earlier. Making sure that this step is precise will help you get sharp corners when we flip the cover right sides out. This is what the seam should look like once you're done. Then all we have to do is repeat those same steps for all four sides. Pin or clip the pieces in place, sew a straight stitch with 1 4th of an inch seam allowance, and do it all over again until the cover starts to take its full form. Okay, at this point we have half of a box, and all we have to do is put the top on. Putting on the top is the same thing as putting on the bottom, so I'm not going to go over those steps, but it's super easy. The only thing I would make sure that you do is that when you start it, you actually open the zipper a little bit, because once it's completely enclosed, you still want to be able to fully open the zipper and then flip it inside out. But yeah, let's go ahead and do that now. Hey guys, we've got a full cushion box thing going on here. What we're gonna do now is we're going to serge all of the edges together. Like I said earlier, you could have opted to serge all the edges separately, but I'm doing them together, so let's get into that now. Also, if you're interested in the machine that I'm using, I'll link a video so you can learn about it. I'm gonna serge the entire top portion of the box, then the entire bottom portion of the box, and then I'm gonna do all of the sides, and that's just the order that I'm gonna go in. Okay. It's all done, and now it's time for the moment of truth. Making sure it fits, which it should. I'm not really worried about it, but very exciting. When you flip everything inside out, you just wanna like push kind of hard on those corners, and then they should come out really nice and crispy. of the back cushions. There's four different back cushions and then I'm gonna make all the seat cushions next. I'm gonna go ahead and make all the rest of them and then I'll show you what it looks like on the couch. So excited! <laughs> These details are so good. Look at this cute little zipper. It's so cute. <laughs> okay, anyways, very proud. We'll be gone. You guys, she's done and she's so comfy. I'm really happy with the fabric I chose because it's much more durable than the previous covers and I'm so excited that these will be easy to wash when I inevitably forget to put them away before a storm. If you found value out of this video, subscribe for more sewing content and I will see you in the next one.